Good evening and thanks for joining us on your Monday night. I'm Sophie Erber. And I'm Tim Seaman. There are more encouraging signs tonight that the pandemic is finally coming under control. But health experts do stress the importance of not getting complacent too soon. And it's our top story now at 6. Iowa's coronavirus dashboard reports just 42 new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours. One month ago, the state averaged more than 300 new cases every day. Health officials credit the more than 1.3 million Iowans who are already fully vaccinated against the virus. However, doctors say that many Iowans still need to become vaccinated before life truly returns to normal. We've seen less cases in the hospitals in general, but unfortunately the cases that we are seeing are either people that didn't get the vaccine or people whose immune system is low and depressed and they get very sick from COVID still. Here in Woodbury County, Siouxland District Health has reported fewer than 15 cases in the last seven days, including two days with no reported cases. Siouxland District Health Department will no longer be reporting daily COVID-19 case numbers, but updates and records will of course continue to be available on the state coronavirus dashboard website. Sioux City Police say that the victim in a weekend shooting is recovering, but officers are still looking for that suspect. This is 22-year-old Corey Deontay Smith of Sioux City. Police have identified him as the alleged shooter. Smith is 5 feet 11 inches tall, 160 pounds, with numerous tattoos on his neck. Tanya tattooed on his left arm, loyalty on his right arm, and blessed on his chest. Uh, police say that they are unsure if he is still in the Siouxland area, but they are hoping for a peaceful surrender. The 25-year-old victim in that case is at home recovering from non-life-threatening injuries after being shot several times in the lower body. That person is cooperating with investigators. The shooting was reported about 10.30 or so Saturday night, taking place at the Heartstone Apartments. That's on West 19th Street. If you'd like updated and other information, it's all on our website now. That's SiouxlandProud.com. You'll also find it on the KCAU 9 News app. Turning our attention to another headline, the hot weather outside, and it looks like it's going to stay that way. Not just here, but it looks everywhere, or a lot of the country yeah. at least. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. Yes, that summertime weather is settling into Siouxland and much of the nation, as you mentioned there, Tim. We had our high temperatures this afternoon get well into the 90s, especially up north in Sioux Falls, 96. The hottest temperature on our Siouxland map, 94 in Spencer and Wayne, 90 this afternoon in Denison, Carroll and Audubon. Tonight we'll see temperatures fall into the 60s and 70s. Not a whole lot of relief as it looks like high pressure is going to continue to circulate over the center of the United States. As we turn the page to Thursday night and Friday, a cold front is expected to come through the area. That'll bring a chance of some storms and relief for the weekend. Your 9 on 9 forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. Sophie. Thanks, Scott. Well, this hot weather is especially affecting farmers across Siouxland. South Dakota Representative Dusty Johnson hosted a roundtable discussion with State Corn Growers Association and the State Soybean Association. That roundtable discussion inside the Minnehaha County machine shed covered a variety of topics that impact farmers. That includes the recent heat wave and a lack of rain concerning for our corn crop. We're not at a high water usage period right now, but we know over the next 30 days as the corn crop progresses, it's going to demand more and more moisture and uh, with very little subsoil moisture and uh, very little uh, chances of rain in the forecast, it is concerning for our growing season here in 2021. According to the most recent drought report out, nearly 40% of South Dakota is experiencing severe or extreme drought conditions. Here in Iowa, farmers are experiencing rent rates that are uh, at their highest point, uh, some 5%, the highest price since 2013. Our land almost, those land prices up, I should say, almost 5%. Iowa State University Extension says farmers are seeing land rates rise an average of $10 an acre. But the rise in rent also correlates to the higher price in commodities. The price of corn is at its highest trading price since 2013, and bean prices continue to climb. Iowa soybean farmer Jeff Jorgensen says that the rising prices won't interfere with the job in front of farmers. You know, we're resilient and we've done it before. It was still the thing is we have to raise a crop in 2021. You know, there's there's still a long ways till we actually put a crop in the bin or we get a uh, run a crop uh, across the scales to uh, turn that into, into chaos instead of grains. 
Tonight at 10, KCAU 9 reporter Jason Toctasian explains why farm rent prices are so high and how farmers are reacting to the rising prices. Well, from farming equipment to kids on bikes, there are plenty of different vehicles that are being driven around Siouxland here, and we have to share the road with them. That's right. Driver's Ed students over at Sioux City West got the chance to hop in a semi-tractor rig today. The American Truckers Association offering those young folks a chance to better understand the importance of sharing the road with these large types of vehicles. These students got to sit in the cab in order to get an idea of what a truck driver can and cannot see. More importantly, the truck will be making stops at all of Sioux City's high schools throughout the week. An important lesson. A different ride there, that is for sure. Yes, nothing like it till you've sat in the front seat of one of those vehicles. Well, after nearly eight decades, most vehicles certainly wouldn't be in great shape, especially if that vehicle was a plane that flew in World War II. How Museum is commemorating the 77th anniversary of D-Day coming up. And it is going to be staying hot in our 9 on 9 forecast with high temperatures mainly in the 90s. We are tracking some thunderstorms later on this week. Join us for the complete forecast. That's coming up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. Safe bet that it doesn't matter if it's car windows, <laughs> house windows, they're all buttoned up tight today. Yeah, mm. unless you're really into a very warm breeze. <laughs> it was breezy, Scott, so at least yeah, when you're outside, it felt like some uh, relief from the heat. A pretty good breeze out there, but it just kind of makes you feel like you're in an oven, more or less. Uh, really hot conditions outside in Siouxland, and it looks like these are going to be sticking around for a while as we take a look outside on the Yankton, South Dakota camera. A few boats in the distance there enjoying their time at Lewis and Clark Lake. We'll check out what's happening in Sioux City now. Our temperature is being reported near 90. It is 88 outdoors with wind in from the south at 9 miles per hour. Relative humidity at 45% in the dew point now at 64. So it is becoming more muggy outside as well. We're observing temperatures in the upper 80s to middle 90s at this time. It is 93 degrees in Yankton, South Dakota. 91 for Norfolk. 93 outside in Wayne. Currently some issues going on with the sensor up in Orange City. Hopefully those can be resolved soon. 89 is our temperature in Cherokee. It's 88 in Carroll and Audubon. And we're checking in with a temperature of 90 to the southeast in Denison. Dew points. Those are in some showers and thunderstorms as it looks like the temperature will drop just a bit. We'll have less humidity this weekend as well with high temperatures looking to hang around 90 degrees and sunshine with us for most of next week. So even if we cash in with a lot of rain Thursday night into Friday, it's likely that we'll dry things back out again rather quickly. We get a look at a picture that was sent in now from Tina Rose. This was in Little Sioux, Iowa. A couple of birds hanging out there and maybe fighting over a snack. Thanks to Tina for passing along that picture. If you have one of your own that you want to share with us of wildlife or weather, go to SiouxLandProud.com, find the weather tab, and roll the mouse down to send us your photos. <laughs> We'd be happy to share them. Amazed daily at our bird watchers here in Siouxland. They capture the most incredible birds. pictures. Yeah, we had some swans last week. Yeah, uh, yeah a lot of uh, variety of birds here in Siouxland. Yeah. So. Yeah, Give them coming. Thatcher or something <laughs> last week. And a I bleeding remember. heart yeah. dog That's right. or something. Yeah, that was pretty cool too. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Scott. Yeah. Well, despite today's high temperatures, the Sioux City Charity Golf Tournament was back on the fairway today after being canceled a year ago, of course, because of COVID. Of course, around 70 golfers were at the Sioux City Country Club for this tournament, and it was benefiting Safe Place. That is formerly the Council on Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence. Safe Place relies on funds from this single event to help clients with uh, their needs that aren't available through grants like transportation, off-site housing, and other non-typical services. Get funding from grants and United Way and places like that, but we still have a shortfall without community support. Uh, it's really the community uh, dollars, the private dollars, that help us provide um, that extra kind of hand up uh, for folks. So that event typically raises $40,000 for the organization. Well, it's been 77 years since D-Day. Pretty amazing. Some veterans marked this anniversary with a very special plane ride. Find out why veterans got to fly aboard a plane that also flew during World War II. That's coming up next. KCAU 9 News. Yesterday marked 77 years since the D-Day invasion during World War II. And to commemorate the day, a Texas museum gave residents a chance to get an up-close look at the plane that led that invasion. Laura Lockheed takes us there. The roaring engine, 
The smell of exhaust from a plane that is no ordinary aircraft. Without this airplane, I mean, we, the country, the world wouldn't be what it is today. It's a time capsule to June 6, 1944. This C-47 led the group of hundreds of planes at Normandy 77 years ago Sunday. Named That's All Brother, it dropped paratroopers into occupied France, evacuated the wounded, and dropped supplies. These are people, young men, who put their lives on the line. For some of these young men jumping from the plane, it may have been their first or even their last mission. Here is the door that these paratroopers, men aged 18, 19, 20, younger than me, would have jumped out of. Now let's climb up as they would have. Not as easy as it looks, especially carrying all those pounds of equipment they were. Just think about how terrified they must have been feeling before they jumped. That night, it must have been pitch black, the engines deafeningly loud, and they're jumping into enemy territory with German troops shooting at them. It makes me want to cry how, how frightened they must have been. The plane drops the paratroopers from 500 to 800 feet through fog, darkness, and enemy gunfire. Over the weekend, you could see this famous and historic plane flying over Lubbock. Inside the plane, it's loud, and the turbulence could knock you over. It gives them a physical, tangible thing that they can reach out and touch and maybe take a ride in and really understand what that journey across the channel meant and what that invasion meant to the people that actually flew these aircraft. After the war, it was sold and fell into disrepair. But the commemorative Air Force poured millions into fixing it up so that the plane is flying again almost 80 years later. A testament to the courage and to the sacrifice of the men it carried into combat. World War II veterans, there aren't that many left to share their story and this aircraft can live on and actually help tell that story. Incredible work. Well, KCAU 9 News is proud to tell the stories of our Siouxland veterans every Tuesday during our 10 o'clock newscast. Nominations are always open, so if you know of a veteran with a story that he or she might like to share, just send it our way to veteransvoices at kcautv.com. Time to talk a little sports. It didn't matter which game you were playing, it was hot today. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Uh, pretty tough day to be outside. However, <laughs> plenty of big games coming up outside, so hopefully that helps get things. Also, if you're feeling a little too hot, just think about hockey. Muskie's <laughs> goaltender Akira Schmidt honored today by the USHL, plus the Huskers baseball team needs a win to keep its season alive. We'll talk about that and more coming up next in sports. Spencer taking on North Polk as the Tigers look for their second semifinal appearance in program history. And they score a lot, like 70 goals in the last six games. Jacob Russo and I were, are, were just baffled at how, I mean, how do you score that many goals? Endless highlights. I, I, yeah, it's beautiful <laughs> for us, but man, their opponents. Woo. And at this time of the year, when you're facing quality teams, that is super impressive. Yeah, no kidding. Thanks, Jake. We check in for one final look at your warm forecast. First, we'll take you outside now from Wayne, America. We'll be right back. Not a bad time to uh, find a place to cool off today, maybe one of those splash pads, because it seems like uh, this weather is here to stay, unless you're Jake and you're shooting hockey highlights. Then, <laughs> then you don't care because you're inside. Got to stay cool somehow. Yeah, yeah it looks like uh, this is going to be our new normal, at least for a little bit. Warm temperatures. Tonight we'll see a low temperature of 66 with a clear sky above and south-southeast winds between 5 and 10. For tomorrow, hitting a high of 91, so just about the same level of warmth as what we experienced today with some more sunshine dialed up in Siouxland. 93 on Wednesday, 96 appears to be the peak of the heat on Thursday. A cold front looks to be swept through Thursday night going into Friday with a chance of some showers and storms for a change and then 80s and 90s to round out the 9 on 9. Make sure you stay hydrated if you've got to be outside. Right. Important. Important. That's right. Thanks for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 10. Until then, have a great night. Good night.